Good evening, folks. Welcome back to Advanced Art Chemistry. A little bit of organic content uh, tonight. Uh, I've got in mind benzene. Uh, SQA, page 96 <laughs> to 96. It doesn't sound very much, um, and it used to be a lot bigger. Uh, if you look back through old past paper questions, you'll find a variety of weird oddball questions involving benzene. It, it got dumbed down a few years back. So the good news is, won't take long tonight. These are the three things I would like us to have a look at tonight. The structure of a benzene molecule, its formula and its uh, shape, uh, the actual bonding that's involved in it, and you need to know four reactions according to the SQA. The good news is you don't need to know the mechanism of those reactions, so no curly arrow is time. You just need to know the reactants and what you make. And basically regurgitate it if you ever see it in a question. You'll see what I mean in a second. I, I think we'll start with the structure and formula and shape. Benzene is a chemical you don't get your hands on much in school because pure benzene itself is a proven carcinogen. It causes cancer. Having said that, this video is sponsored by ibuprofen, um, invented by Boots in the 1960s. I say invented, it was actually, it was a complete synthetic molecule. Uh, and it's got a benzene ring stuck at the centre of it. So um, it crops up all over the place. Salicylic acid, otherwise known as aspirin, more or less. Acetyl salicylic acid is aspirin, I know. It's also got a benzene ring in it. So despite the fact that the bare molecule is quite nasty, it is almost a, a frequent flyer when it comes to organic chemistry in real life systems. Let's have a look. C6H6. That is the formula of a benzene molecule. I said I would look at its structure, I would look at its formula and its shape. So here we go, C6H6. Now, if you have been paying attention over the years, you realise that that formula cannot be correct there because each carbon only has three bonds on it. It was thought for a while that perhaps there were three double bonds in here, so cyclohexatriene, in other words. That is most definitely not the case for a variety of reasons. Let's have a look at a couple of these reasons, because the SQA love to ask you about them as a little semi-trick question. These bonds are all identical lengths. Cyclohexatriene would have alternating double and single bonds, which are different lengths to each other. Single bonds are longer than double bonds. So this is evidence that uh, it's not cyclohexatriene. Uh, other evidence uh, is to do with the fact that if it did have three double bonds, it would under, so, uh, two seconds, identical bond lengths. So bond lengths equal. The reason I'm writing these down, you'll see why. It doesn't say this specifically in the arrangements, but they do like to ask about it. Uh, let me just check, sorry, going off camera for a second. Yeah, so bond lengths are equal. Um, also, it does not do addition reactions. In the same way as I don't do football. Uh, I've forgotten how to spell addition reactions. It does not do addition reactions. Uh, and it would if it had three double bonds in it. If you try and react this with bromine, it just sits here and says, I don't think so. Uh, so no addition reactions. Its formula, as I said, is C6H6. Its shape is completely planar. It's totally flat. So if you lifted that benzene molecule off the page and looked at it, it would be completely flat. These H's are in the same plane as these bonds here, which might give you a clue as to the nature of the bonding that's going on here. 120 degrees and completely flat. Does that sound familiar? Uh, and the last thing I would like to put onto here is if you added a different atom onto here, just a single atom, for example, if you added a bromine, then the whole structure would still be completely planar. But if you added, for example, an H3C, a methyl group onto here, then these H's would stick above and below the ring and you would no longer have a planar structure. I have seen them ask that in the past. Multiple choice these days is where it tends to pop up most because the content was dumbed down. Anything I wanted to say, um, so structure, formula, and its shape. Let's have a look at the bonding in benzene. I may actually cheat and print a nice diagram out from Scholar because my drawing skills are atrocious. So let's take a quick look at a potential picture for the structure of the, sorry, the bonding in uh, benzene here. Uh, what we've got here, guys, can I zoom in slightly on this? You gonna let me zoom in, camera? Yeah, okay. So we have got our carbon atoms 
here, the blobs, six of them, we've got our hydrogens here. I like this picture because it shows how nice and flat the structure is. And what is going on? What's this red cloud and this blue cloud above and below the benzene molecule? Well, benzene basically uh, is hybridized in a form of sp2 hybridization, which we have seen before in the alkene family. I'll try and link up to my video on um, molecular orbitals. I haven't done a video on alkenes yet, but once I do that, I'll also try and put a video on alkenes up here. So sp2 hybridization, guys, which means each of these carbons had a spare p orbital above and below the carbon. And so did the neighbouring one as well here, above and below. And what's happened is these p orbitals have overlapped sideways like that and formed pi bonds. Really unusual system here though, as in all the orbitals have overlapped with each other. That's why you get this ring of electrons above and below the actual sp3 bonds, which are these, so these are sigma bonds, sorry, sp3. Shut your mouth, hey. There are sigma bonds here in the ring, but there are also pi bonds above and below the ring. It's actually what's called a pi system. The SQA should never do anything naughty like ask you how many pi bonds are in a benzene molecule because it's the very definition of what's called an aromatic compound. Aromatic compounds have uh, pi systems uh, where pi bonds go round uh, um, more than just a double bond. It's like an elongated double bond. You can look at it from the point of view of alternating double and single bonds. Uh, in fact, that contributes to things like coloured molecules, uh, but it's basically it's a pi system. So the bonding SP2 is what's called a member of the aromatic family. If you take chemistry further on, you'll find a whole bunch of these that fit this general description. But we're all interested in this one. Let's zoom back out again. Um, and let's go on to... What are we saying here? I wanted to cover the structure, the formula, the shape. I wanted to cover the bonding in it. And I want to look at the reactions, the four reactions. Oh, just before we leave this behind, uh, there is something still mentioned specifically in the SQA by name, which means they could potentially ask you about it. It's normally called a benzene ring, of course, and you substituted benzene rings. I am a total donut. My apologies. I meant to say that is the correct representation of benzene, of course. Now that we know about this pi system, that is how we show the delocalized ring. Skeletal notation, usually we don't show these H's. They are there, but we don't show them. By the way, you have a look at an example question later on from the SQA, you'll see how they love to actually try and catch you out with this. So this would be methyl benzene. Very true. On the rare occasions that you get a molecule containing a benzene ring, but the chemistry of that molecule is not actually governed by the benzene ring. An example of this would be styrene, which has got a benzene ring attached to ethene, effectively. Now, you might think that this takes precedence, but believe it or not, because the double bond is there, when it comes to addition reactions, so as I said, this is called styrene. This is how you make polystyrene, of course. You link these to each other. So the benzene ring is seen as effectively a hanger-on. It's a substi substituent to the ethene molecule. And you don't call it benzene under these cases. If this is less important than this part here, then this is called the phenyl group. And it does say this specifically in the... So this is actually phenyl ethene. Um, does say it specifically in the arrangements. So they might try and ask you that. I think we can move on from benzene. Uh, there, guys. So we can go back to the reactions. There are four reactions, as I said. Really should have done either one. I do sincerely apologise. Fried egg notation, as I like to call it. The benzene fried egg with the delocalised electrons, the pi system in the centre. Let's have a look at the first reaction. Let's have a look at reaction number one involving benzene. My favourite one, actually, because it's used to make explosives. I probably... <laughs> If I ever make any money off these YouTube videos, I've just realized this is probably instantly demonetized because I said the E word there. So you take a benzene ring um, and you cook it up with what I call hell in a beaker. You cook it up with a mixture of concentrated H2SO4. You can't use normal dilute sulfuric acid. It's got to be concentrated and uh, concentrated nitric acid. When you have this lovely combo in your beaker, then you end up generating the nitronium ion, which is one of our electrophiles. 
uh, and it sticks onto the benzene ring and you generate nitrobenzene. Uh, let's do reaction number two. Now, by the way, this the reason this is up here is this molecule, before we put the nitros on it, benzene ring, methyl benzene, it used to be called toluene in old names. And we put three nitro groups onto it. So this is tri-nitro-toluene, otherwise known as TNT. Let's do reaction two. So reaction two is sulfonation. And I know we spell it with an F these days, but I'm an old fart, so I'm going to stick with pH. Nothing you can do to stop me. So there. So we have a benzene ring, and we cook this up with just purely concentrated sulfuric acid this time. So conch H2SO4, and you end up making sulfonated benzene. SO3, don't worry about why it is that. There's a whole bunch of historic chemistry that used to be in sixth year. Um, do you need to know? No, we don't. I'm just double checking. Good. Um, so basically, once again, just memorize the type of reaction, the reactants, and the products here, guys. Memorize it, vomit it back up on the page, get the marks nice and easy. The reason this is here is this used to be used in connection with making detergent molecules where you had a big long chain of carbons up attached to here and you had an ionic bit on the end. But as I said, that's history. Okay, we've moved on to alkylation. In other words, we're going to stick a carbon onto, or possibly multiple carbons, onto this benzene ring. How do we go about that voodoo? Well, what we need is we need another reactant and we need a catalyst. The other reactant in this case is a haloalkane. So let's keep life nice and simple. Let's do CH3Cl. And the catalyst that the SK want you to know about for this one is aluminium trichloride. So AlCl3. Um, now what this actually does, although once again, don't think you need to know the details, but if you're wondering how this actually works, is this AlCl3, there's a bond here, of course, with a pair of electrons. This steals the chlorine atom, but also both the electrons in this bond, which leaves you behind a carbocation. So this teams up with this and forms AlCl4 minus, and you're left with CH3, carbocation on demand, which then knocks one of the H's off and sticks itself on instead. And we end up with this, methyl benzene. So that's alkylation. Uh, which just leaves us with type 4, which takes us to our last one. Yeah, halogenation. So we're adding we're adding a halogen um, to this. And the SQA, once again, want you to know a couple of options. Uh, there are a choice of catalysts. They want you to know both for some reason. So let's say we were going to add chlorine uh, to this molecule. The other reactant we need is, is chlorine. Duh. And the catalysts they're specifying are aluminium trichloride again. Uh, sorry, I've changed my colour code. Should have done that in black. So that's our reactant. And the catalysts you can choose from are AlCl3 or FeCl3. So that's iron 3 chloride or aluminium trichloride. Either one of these two does the same trick as before. Uh, again, you don't really need to know why, but if you know why, it makes it easier to remember, in my opinion. So it steals the chlorine and it steals both these electrons away and it leaves you, believe it or not, with this bad boy, chlorine with a positive charge, which then knocks one of these hydrogens off the benzene ring and sticks itself on instead and you get chlorobenzene. The other option is if you're using um, bromine, so you could stick a bromine on instead and they specifically say they want you to use aluminium bromide this time, a matching so aluminium tribromide or iron tribromide. You know how picky they are. Just keep them happy. And then that would give you a benzene ring with a bromine atom stuck to it. So bromobenzene instead. That is uh, our four reactions. Those are our four reactions. And I am a total clown because um, I should have introduced them as the type of reaction that all four of these are. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but in common, we 
we're starting, we're getting electrophiles for all of these. Where are my nitrations? I've lost my nitration. Here we go. So the electrophile for nitration was NO2+. Plus. The electrophile here was a carbocation. We had a chlorine with a positive charge. So these are all electrophilic. Don't worry about what the electrophile is here. It's a little bit complicated, so we'll just gloss over that. But my point being that I'm a complete donut because I should have specified the fact that benzene does electrophilic substitution. So you need an electrophile and you are replacing a hydrogen from the benzene ring with whatever you want to substitute onto it. So that's what C6H6 does. It loves these. Happy benzene, eh? Uh, when you're doing electrophilic substitution reactions, it doesn't do addition. It doesn't do nucleophilic substitutions. You can't uh, easily hydrate benzene or anything along these lines. Uh, this is a classic question that the SQ will try and hit you with. Uh, as in, what type of reaction is this? So it's electrophil... Electrophil substitution? Electrophilic substitution. Goodness me. Uh, and I think we're done at that as far as benzene goes, guys. No point in making this any more complicated than it needs to be. As I said, it used to be a lot more complex, but it's not anymore. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.